It's that time of year. The October caddis are just beginning to show here in the Northeast. October caddis are different from many caddis species in that as pupae, they swim or crawl to a nearby rock where they'll emerge as winged adults and shed their pupal shucks. They seem to prefer fairly steep rock faces adjacent to somewhat deep moving water. Most of the time, October caddis will crawl out right at dark, but their shucks are easiest to find early the next morning before they have a chance to dry out, fall off, and get lost to the river. For many years now, I've been using a simple soft tackle swung at dusk in likely October caddis spots and have done quite well. This Euro-style October caddis is an attempt to get down a little deeper to entice fish fearful of taking offerings higher up in the water column. It's easy to tie and sinks like a stone, just perfect for spots like these, which are likely to have October caddis in abundance. For a hook, I'm going to use a Lightning Strike JF2 size 12 jig hook, which I'll match with a slightly oversized 5 seconds of an inch black tungsten bead. I'll first use plunger style hackle pliers to get hold of the hook and then a bodkin to pick up the bead and align the small hole between my fingertips. This makes it easy to slip the hook point into that small hole and work the bead around to the eye. You can then get the hook and bead assembly firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Be sure the small portion of the slot points up, not the larger one, and that the bead is right up against the hook eye. I like to use .02 lead-free wire to weight the fly even further and to help stabilize the bead. Start the wire on the hook shank and take seven or eight wraps before helicoptering to break it off close. With the bead oriented correctly, push the wraps forward to compress them against the bead. You can then mash the first few wraps with a small pair of needle nose pliers. This will allow them to slip up into the bead slot and make it possible to tuck the tail without the wrap spinning. For thread, going a little heavy helps. Here, UTC 140 denier in fluorescent orange. Get your thread started on the hook shank behind the weight and take wraps over top of the wire to lock it down. You can then snip the tag end off close. Take a few more wraps to smooth the transition between the wire and the hook shank and end with your tying thread right at the start of the hook bend. Brassy sized gold ultra wire is used to rib and segment the fly. A 10 inch length will make numerous flies. Butt the end of the wire against the weight and start taking wraps of tying thread to secure it to the top of the hook shank. End with your tying thread a short distance back from the weight. Amber colored flexi floss, or similar, is used to form the abdomen of the fly. After snipping a strand free from the hank or spool, lay one end against the hook shank and take nice tight thread wraps to secure it. Bind the material all the way back to the start of the hook bend, then continue taking thread wraps up to the bead. Don't worry if some stuff peeks through. It will add detail and realism to the body. Get hold of the floss and stretch it as you wrap in order to produce a smooth, evenly tapered body on the fly. When you reach the bead, use your tying thread to firmly anchor the floss. You can then snip the excess off close. Now, get hold of the gold wire and start making open spiral wraps over top of the body. Six or seven turns generally looks pretty good. At the bead, secure the wire with turns of tying thread and then helicopter to break it off close. Give your bobbin a little counterclockwise spin to uncord and flatten the thread. Then use your bodkin to flatten it further. This should make it easy to split the thread with the point of the bodkin. Once you've got the thread split, insert the index finger of your left hand between the two strands to hold them apart. You can then put down your bodkin and with your right hand, pull out just the smallest wisp of chocolate brown SLF prism dubbing. Insert the dubbing between the two strands so it's about perpendicular to them. Remove your finger to sandwich the dubbing between the two strands and give your bobbin a good clockwise spin to cord up the thread and create a fuzzy little dubbing rope. Take wraps with the rope to make a minimal collar on the fly. Anything more than this will just slow the fly's descent. Take a few more thread wraps, spin your bobbin counterclockwise to uncord the thread, then do a four or five turn whip finish 
to create a narrow fluorescent orange hotspot band. You can then snip or cut your tying thread free. Although it probably isn't necessary, I like to give any overly long fibers a trim to shorten them. A drop of head cement applied to the thread wraps will ensure they don't come unraveled. Remember, with all the weight, this fly is going to be a bottom bouncer and needs to be durable. Set your freshly minted October caddis aside to dry, and in short order, it'll be ready to fish. <music>